Hey there! I think it's time that we change out the old EEC4 computer for the EEC5 so we can tune our Turbo Fox project. Oh, so the time has finally come, and I'll be honest with you, I have no clue what I'm doing here, because um, I've never done it. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm getting myself into. Um, theoretically, should be very simple. I shouldn't have too many issues, and uh, well, we'll see. I mean, so start digging into it, start taking out. The, well, the first step is to take out the old ECU and then see exactly what we're working with in terms of uh, the wires and whatnot. Then that's where the, the fun part comes in. Uh, one thing I do know is that the ECU is in the uh, passenger side kick panel here, and um, I definitely see it back there, and I definitely see a whole lot of other things holding it in place, or that are at least in front of it, preventing me from getting to it. So I just uh, took the glove box out there and I looked up in there and noticed that there's a little plastic uh, push tab. This actually gives me a reason now to use my new Harbor Freight purchase, which uh, is conveniently those clip uh, removing tools. So, because uh, I just have a hell of a time getting into places and doing it, so I figured I would buy one of these tools for this very exact moment. Tool up in there. And oh, perfect. It's like it was meant to do the job. All right, now I should be able to pull this pull this piece out. It's kind of blocking my way here. Come on, it's got like this really thick, I don't know if this is from Ford or who did this, but it's like carpet padding on it. It's crazy. Alright. And I guess if this is indeed from Ford, it's so it cushions everything and keeps everything from moving around back there, which is probably a good thing. But, uh, alright, well, there's that. So, now let's assess the situation and see what we got going on here. Um... I don't know which way to go about this. Do I go in from this way? Do I go in from this way? I don't know. Yeah, it gives me a little bit more room, don't you think? Okay, wires and wires. Lots of wires. bit of an update here. I uh, found a few more connectors hiding up on in the, the valley there. So I uh, got them out of the way. Now the only thing I see holding this in is this plastic piece here. There's a little uh, bolt right back in there. Right there. That one. Right there. So I believe if I just remove that Hopefully it comes down. I have a new clue. Alright, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. I did not drop it, thank you. Aha, uh -huh. that was the only thing in there. to do to get the new one in so if you ever wanted to know the differences between uh, four and five generation EEC ECUs for Fords um, here it is isn't much the biggest difference between the two 
uh, mainly was because the five at the addition of um, onboard diagnostics too. So of course, it had the ability to have um, you know onboard diagnostics. So therefore, the biggest difference is right here, and that is the pin count. Uh, five has like 107 or something like that standard and four is like 60 pins and you can see there's definitely a lot less pins than the five so that is mainly the difference in fact I think the the connectors are almost identical minus the the pin count that is pretty much in a nutshell the main differences between EEC4 and EEC5 I can tell you this is going to be a royal pain. So this is the connector from the uh, Ranger ECU. Uh, I've you know decided to repin everything, so I actually just had to go and get a uh, tool here Ooh, from Advanced Auto Parts. That's going to push all these wires out, and basically I'm just going to go in and see. What the cool thing is on the back of the connectors here; they're actually numbered. Um, so I just have to go find the reference for, uh, the same thing in the car and I gotta take down, take that connector apart too. And then basically just put those wires in the appropriate spots on this connector and then all should be well. Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> so as you can see, I've been a little busy here and, um, this tool actually did not really help me much at all. I'm sure that tool will find use at some point, but one thing I did learn is when I was uh, when I was messing with all this, what I realized is this red piece here at the end of the connector actually comes out. So then it exposes all of the uh, the ends of the uh, pins here. So what I ended up doing was creating my own tool, which sometimes you just have to do. So I took. Uh, just a little screwdriver here and I put it on my grinding wheel and just grinded it down to a, a uh, flat point which then I used to go in here and uh, basically at oh, wrong end basically it's kind of push in wiggle around push out some of them I just would put it in there and give it one little tap with the hammer and it would loosen them up and then I just yank them out the bottom so that was pretty easy and this will hopefully make getting the uh, terminals out of the other connector that's in the car easier um, because I need to keep everything uh, as it is so I can repin this here. So now the next step is of course I have to take some time. I'm not going to probably video this part because I have to really concentrate and focus on uh, making sure I'm putting the right wires to the right pins. I have a couple different references that I'm going to use for my phone. Um, that's going to basically give me the idea to what I need to do, but I definitely need to focus on this. Once I get this done, I'll pick up the rest of the video. So I did something, oh my god, extremely, extremely freaking stupid. I mean, I do that quite often, but, you know, when it costs me money, that's when it gets really upsetting. Let me show you this ridiculousness that... And you think I would know better, but I guess it boils down to I am human and I do make mistakes. And well, this is just an example of that. So <laughs> everything was going well. I got everything hooked up here, repinned on the EEC5 harness that everything I needed and then left out a lot of the other stuff that I don't need. Um, because it was going to be deleted anyway, so I don't need the connectors to the things regardless. So this was enough to get the car running. And I went to go grab the ECU here. And I went and I did this. And as soon as I got this, the box, ECU box next to the connector, I realized I done effed up big time. See what my stupid self did? Yes, I pinned it backwards. And while this isn't a super big issue, I could just take the time and redo it the correct way from the back. The issue is I broke a lot of the um, 
I know. I, I broke a lot of the, the little tabs in the back here that hold all of the um, pins, all the, the connectors, straight. So I didn't, you know, a lot of connectors won't be firmly held in place. And there was always a chance while plugging it in, it could bend a pin on the um, ECU itself. So, of course, that was... That was not something I was willing to do because this is still a good ECU. Um, I can probably sell it to someone who maybe needs it and, you know, move on. But I just can't believe I did that. I can't. <laughs> this is just one of those things you do and you're like, how, why did, you know? And I think, I think what happened was is, and this isn't justifying my mistake, but it may be it may be partial reason to why I wasn't paying attention in the first place. Um, YouTubing and working on cars are two very different things. And if you're not good at multitasking in the first place, then it becomes extremely hard, uh, especially when you're trying to get certain shots and you're making sure you're trying to get good content. And, you know, you're more worried, like for me, I was, before I started doing that, I was really worried about making sure I got all the shots first before I went ahead and started working on that because, it, you know, it's just part of the video. And I was really, really focused on that. And I guess what happened was in doing so, making sure I had all these shots, I wasn't paying attention because I was rushing because it, get, it was getting really cold that day. It actually took me a couple days to... Um, get this figured out because it would get cold. I'll come out here work on it for a little bit go back in But I think what happened was just not paying attention I didn't even realize I was doing it wrong in the first place Just one of those mistakes that I guess I'll learn from and not do it again Hopefully so you live and you learn right you live and you freaking learn But you're like Kirk. Well, it costs you money. You only paid like $40 for that right from the junkyard Yeah, yeah, that's right. I did only pay $40 for that um ecu from the junkyard that is absolutely correct uh the reason why it's costing me money is because i need to get this car running and i have to have some sort of solution to tune for because i'm putting a big turbo on not so big of an engine so i have to you know make my calibrations my adjustments <laughs> the money that is spent the money that's costed me because of my mistake is not because of what I had in with this ECU, it's because I had to order a whole new solution. A far, far better solution than that Ranger ECU was gonna be, and it is going to be the best solution in the long run. I just wasn't looking to spend the money now. It was actually going to be the long-term solution in the first place, um, but I didn't really want to spend the money up front, and I also want to see if I could make the ECU, <laughs> I also wanted to see if I could make the ECU swap work anyway, because I just like tinkering and figuring things out. You know, my apologies for not a super exciting video, but you know, it is what it is. Things happen. We move on from it, right? But this is definitely paved way for much more exciting things very coming very, very soon. So definitely bear with me. Keep watching the videos. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, do so because you're going to want to see what's coming next. It's something that not only, uh, you know, that I'm going to do with this, but it's such an affordable thing that you'll be able to probably do it as well. And it might inspire you to do so. So keep a lookout for the next videos coming up. And keep watching after my outro here. I'm going to put a special little clip at the end that's going to give you a hint to what it could be that's uh, coming next for, for the Mustang here. So just uh, just wait till the end of the video. But that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And if you wanna see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next video. Oh my God, I cannot believe this more money wasted. I need a drink. Yep, that'll do.